As we continue our service this morning, we're going to go to a reading of Psalm 54. O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies, and your faithfulness put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble. For my eye has looked on triumph in my enemies. Let's pray. Father, we know that you are our helper. You are our God. You are our Savior. Lord, you are so good to us. Lord, as we go through these times and these seasons, Lord, help us to be thankful. Help us to be grateful in all the things that we have. Help us to see the blessings that you have set before us. Lord, help us to, to do right by your words. Help us to obey your commands. Lord, help us to, to love your words and love your wisdom. Lord, I pray for the service right now, Lord, as we go into a time where we, we sing and we cry out to you. Lord, help us to praise you and help us to hear the words deep into our souls and deep into our hearts and let them be a prayer to you this morning. Lord, as we hear from the word this morning, help us to, to hear it rightly. Help us to apply it rightly to our lives. Lord, would you, would you teach us? Would you correct us? Lord, would you speak to us individually this morning? Lord, we ask that you move in a way that only you can move. And we ask us in your name, we want you to be glorified in all things. Amen. Let's all stand as we get ready to worship the Lord.
Father in heaven, uh, again, thank you. May, may our prayers just be saturated with thanks. May our lives be saturated with thanks. Lord, uh, open our eyes, open our ears that we might see and hear your word in a fresh way today. That we may grow and glean from it with the desire and change our desires, God, to fit what is best to, pay, to, to the praise of your glory by your grace and the blessing it is to call you Lord. Thank you for your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. We are continuing our sermon series. We're not breaking it up. Called Serving with Excellence. And we'll be approaching it with a slightly different angle today. Uh, in light of Thanksgiving approaching. Um, I'll try to... You know, if, 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 if you guys start getting up in the middle of the sermon because you smell that aroma wafting in here. I understand. I won't be offended. Over the last few weeks, we've covered three topics on serving God with excellence. It, it, so what we've covered so far in this series, the church, those are the gifts that God has given us to serve one another. And then we've got our labors, our work. Work is actually a good thing. Uh, God created humans in his image to be workers before the fall. Everybody said amen. <laughs> and then... Uh, last week, we talked about in the home, because a Christian home, just like a church, should be holy, should be a holy house of worship. And a home built on the rock of Jesus is, is healthy, and it's purposeful. So we should be pointing our kids or uh, whoever we find, who, whatever relationships we have to people, we should be pointing them to Jesus in discipleship. It's a, it's a it's, it's a constant thing. We don't stop. We don't arrive this side of glory, okay? Continue to seek God and to serve God. Serving God is seeking to glorify Him in every function of life. Serving God, seeking to glorify God in every function of life. Whatever you are, whatever you do, that's the best way to understand it. So next way, we're going to tie all this up, and we're going to look at how we can even serve God in entertainment and pastimes. But today... I have a different question for you, and that is this. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about serving God? What is your attitude toward thinking about serving him in every function of life? Is it intimidating? Does it inspire you to look for areas that you may have consciously or unconsciously made off limits to the Almighty? Okay, like this much God, but no further. And then finally, do you desire to be a servant of God? So we're going to look at the heart behind it. And the sermon title for this morning is Serving God with Gratitude. Serving God with Gratitude. So we're, we're seeking to cover today what the attitude should be behind it. And so you have to ask yourself, do, you, do I have an attitude of gratitude? What is my overall disposition? Am I the Eeyore of my group or am I adding joy? Am I the fountain or am I the drain? How far does my thankfulness go? And if some of us are being honest, we can be selectively thankful, right? Selectively thankful. You see that with the weather. I've used that example before. This is the day that the Lord has made. You walk outside and you've got a blizzard like Tony shared on Facebook the other day that we should all pray for. I'm not praying for a blizzard, but at the same time, regardless of what the weather pattern is, we should be able to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be thankful for it regardless. Thank him for his cold. Thank him for the heat. That's the one I struggle with. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the heat. Walk outside and start sweating. Thank you, Lord, for perspiration. But then, hey, by the sweat of the brow, right? <laughs> Thank you, God. So we can find ourselves like this. Thank you, God, for the mountaintop experiences, but not so much for the valleys, right? But we should be thanking him for both. And we're just saying that. God of the mountain is the God of the valley. It's all. He's the God of all of it. And so scripture is clear, and it's challenging when it comes to the availability of thankfulness in any circumstance. And the Bible says this, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances, 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's challenging, right? That's pretty tough. But how can we take that attitude and apply it to anywhere we go? Home, church environment, work, labor, downtime, all of it. And so I hope that we see this morning that in order to serve God with excellence, which is what we've been talking about, you have to be grateful. To serve God with excellence requires gratitude. It's not optional. So let's look at Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 1 through 7. We'll have a main uh, idea here at the end, but I wanted to get the whole passage. So Colossians 2, 1 through 7. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word here. Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of fullness, full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word. And for the context here, and, and, and because we need to set this up, I want us all to understand, the primary theme, because we're just jumping right into a passage in Colossians, the primary theme in the letter of Colossians is the supremacy of Jesus Christ in all things. Okay? Amen. It's the supremacy of Jesus. Life is all about Jesus. In chapter 1, Paul tells the church, he's, he, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. All things were made by Jesus, through Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word became flesh. Everything was made through the Word. And so, all things were made for the Word. And, and so there are several reminders in this book about the gospel, who we were without Jesus. You were once far away. You were once cut off because of the wages of sin. You were once dead in sin, but through the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, you have been born again. He has reconciled us to God by believing in his name. That is something to be thankful for. Amen? The forgiveness of sin is available in Jesus. And so that's why we're constantly asking, do you know him? Because if you know Jesus, it makes all the difference. In verse 2 of this passage, Paul, Paul gives the reason. I, I love it. It's just, you don't have to speculate. And here's the reason that he writes the letter. That the hearts of the Christians in Colossae and us who would come after may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. Whew. That's heavy. So the Holy Spirit wants us to be encouraged, but he also wants us to be challenged, okay? The Holy Spirit wants us to be encouraged and challenged. If you got only somebody that talks about encouragement, okay, you know what happens? It's all fluff, there's no substance, and it's airy, and it usually comes across as fake. All challenge, though, leads to a bunch of action, people doing things with dead, cold hearts, okay? We need both. Challenged and encouraged. Encouraged in love, challenged to seek more knowledge when it comes to God. And he just puts this truth out there in verse 3. He doesn't try to explain it. In whom are hidden all the treasures and wisdom of knowledge. Think about that. Wow, really. So, all knowledge, all wisdom in one person. And this is a very strong claim. And this is difficult for a Western mindset, okay? And so Paul, we might, think, we might stand back and say, hey, I'm going to need some evidence, all right? I'm going to need some, a theological synopsis on the claim that you just made. You, the burden of proof, Paul, falls on your shoulders. Science and logic have spoken. 
And so what's interesting about that, because that's that might be your natural reaction to read it, and the Holy Spirit knows that, and then you get this verse next. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. To make such a claim like that, that's what's expected to come. You're going to have to explain that. No, I don't want to delude you with logical arguments. And so the question is, who said we needed to understand everything? Who said that? Nobody did. We assumed it. I can't scientifically prove that God exists. Neither can you. But neither can anyone scientifically prove that God doesn't exist. And so you know what that means? At the end of the day, belief and unbelief are both about faith. It's just they have a completely different object of that faith. Faith in Christ is foundational for Christians, and so whether you've been a Christian for five months, five years, or 50 years, we can't, and we don't, and we won't understand everything, especially this side of glory. And that brings us to the first point. We don't need to understand all circumstances to be thankful in all circumstances. God is good. All the time. I put that up there. We say it a lot. You know it. But I also know how prone we are to forgetting it in real time. When the day gets bad. When circumstances get tough. And then we have that truth. What truth can calm the troubled soul? The the soul in anguish. The person that's having a bad day. God is good. God is good. And when you really believe that, it, it affects your attitude. And it helps us to maintain gratitude. And so if we aren't grateful, okay, this moment, if you're not not grateful in this moment, and assuming there isn't a crisis, though though scripture teaches that joy and thankfulness are capable of being had at all times. It's Bible, okay? If If we're not being grateful, then we're failing to believe in the goodness of God, okay? If right now, at this moment, if you're failing to believe, if you're failing to believe in the goodness of God, you will not be thankful. And it's, it's okay, <laughs> believe me, it's okay if we don't understand everything that's happening. We're all looking through a glass dimly, okay? We don't, nobody has all the answers, but we're all trying. Verse five, for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. You see what Paul gets excited about? I rejoice to see you firm in your faith. That is worth getting excited about, church. Not in what you know, okay? He didn't say that. Not You know, I'm rejoicing in how smart you are. No, I'm rejoicing in your faith, how much faith you have in God. And so if we're being honest, guys, we just just don't really know a lot, okay? We don't really know a lot. And, and, and so we get into these intellectual sparring contests, and it's like, well, you know, I know more than the other guy. And then you get to feel good about that. But then there's always a bigger fish. There's always going to be somebody smarter than you. Do any of us know more than the Almighty? I think there's something that happens at the end of the book of Job that we could all stand to read from time to time when we start feeling like we are owed answers. I'm sorry, Job, were you there when I made everything? No. So the answer is to look at his character. We look at the character of God and we get encouraged. And if we do that, even in the worst of circumstances, we can find gratitude. Gratitude swells up in the heart. And so I want to say this too. The Christian life is not, hey, just be thankful, okay? Because God said so. Just just do it. Just be thankful. You just brush, brush over some whitewash a really bad situation. It's not just be thankful because God said so. It's be thankful because God is. Okay? Be thankful because because God is. He is true God of true God. There's nothing more true than God. And if you know Jesus and even understand a privilege, a, a fraction of the privilege that it is to know Jesus Christ, then you'll be thankful today. All right, so the meat of the topic. That's kind of more introduction, but. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. 
This is what the Bible teaches. Received. I'm going to talk about some of this tonight. So if, if you take Pastor Lon up on uh, the dinner invitation, I'd love to have you there. Are we thankful for the gospel? Are we thankful for the good news? Our level of gratitude will depend heavily on our perspective toward life in general, okay? That is what we think we deserve versus what we actually deserve. What we think we're owed versus what we are actually owed. What we actually receive, that's grace, what we actually receive as opposed to what we should receive. You start to think about these things and the thankful spectrum should shift. If you, and if you hear that and you're thinking, well, God doesn't know what I'm going through right now. I, this is going to sound a little harsh, okay? But if you came in here and you're thinking that, like God doesn't know what I'm dealing with, brother, sister, you need to repent, okay? I'm not trying to be harsh, but seriously, God knows. God knows every single thing that you're going through. And I would, I would kind of hit back with, do you know what he went through? Do you know what Jesus went through? Because we only understand that in part. But he paid for our sins. And that's more than Golgotha. The price, the spiritual price of taking the weight of the sin of all who would call upon his name on his shoulders. Wow. Wow. I don't pretend, though, to have all the reasons as to why we have difficult days beyond this thing that plagues all of us called sin, okay? I don't have all the answers to that. You don't either. But I know that God is in control of everything, too, okay? And so if I can, I can rest in that, if I can combine those two things, God is in control and God is good, then I can be grateful, I can find gratitude in that perspective. Preach the gospel to yourself. Anybody hear the gospel and think like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna move on, to, I'm, I'm done with that one, I'm moving on, okay? That's not the goal. You need to do that daily because we're prone to forget the gospel. You know it? And if you don't think you are, then you've never doubt, you've ever like messed up and be like, oh man, I done did it too much this time. That's a failure to believe the gospel. Jesus pays for our sins, past, present, and future, and what he requires from us is daily repentance. That's it. Here's the thing. We live in a universe where the God of the universe stepped into the world, gives us every good thing that we have. But he didn't stop there with gifts. He also gave us himself. And we're going to see in this passage that our foundations matter. And so the challenge is walk with Jesus, okay? You know, if you're not grateful today, maybe you need to look where you're walking, all right? Don't hear the gospel once. I did that. Don't, don't take that approach to Christianity that's like, all right, I did the thing that I needed to do. I'm done with that. Now I can do life my way from here on out. That's, a, that's the path to joyless Christianity, okay? That's the path to joyless Christianity, and, and it could be argued as not being Christian at all. Don't stop seeking Jesus. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Serve God. And we, I, I asked this earlier in the series, but how many of those things that we devote our time and effort to in service are actually capable of serving us back? How many of them? What about Jesus? Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And well beyond any of us could ever serve one another or him. Here's the goal of walking with him. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. There's the challenge. It's a call to be like Christ. Call to be like Jesus. Get in the word, keep going. See what he says is good. See what Jesus says about this topic, and then follow, okay? What foundation are you building on? What is the foundational layer of you as a person, okay? What are you looking for 
as the standard by which you're going to approach life on a regular basis? Is it still with the intellectual deal? Is it just doing a little bit better than the other guy? What ha where has peer pressure in culture interrupted our pursuits of the living God? Because it does. If you want to have, think about this, if you want to have a healthy body, across the board, what's the advice that you'll get? And not, not from the yahoos, like from your average healthcare practitioner, what advice are you going to get? You want to take care of your body, you need to diet and exercise. And all God's people said, don't be talking about diet while that turkey is in the other room kicking. Okay, I get it. There are feasts too. It's all right, we can feast. But moving and eating, they're, they're good for the body, right? But what about for the soul? What's good for the soul? And I'm going to make the argument that seeking to be rooted and established in the faith will also result in a life that abounds in thanksgiving. You see, you could, you could read all that as be rooted, all, all command, right? Be rooted, be established, be thankful. I believe that being thankful is also the result of being rooted and established in Jesus. Okay? Okay? So this is a change that will happen if we seek what the Holy Spirit is encouraging us to seek. Rooted. Root is symbolic of a core, right? It's the part of the plant that feeds its life from the soil. If a root can't reach soil, what happens to the plant? It dies. So the parable of the sower shows us how crucial faith is, faith is in the right things and how much it matters. So I want to pull that up, not the whole parable. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 22 and 23. And if you're thinking, what's this have to do with thankfulness? Hold on, we're getting there. Christ talks of four seeds in the parable of the sower, but only two kind get down into the soil where the roots are, okay? One continues to grow and the other one is stifled. Why is the other one stifled? Well, it says right here, as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, in another 30. What's going on there? You see, the, the effectiveness of the person who hears the word and understands, you've got the ones walking with Jesus here in 23. The thorns, though, thorns, metaphorical false promises in this case, the result of the fall. There are these voices that come from the world and they tell you there's a different way to do things. And usually it's sold as better. But it's not. So here's the point. It, it, it's hard to be thankful, a thankful Christian or a thankful person in general when you're seeking fulfillment in the wrong things. The problem with the, the seed that fell among thorns is that they're trying to find joy in what culture says is popular at the time, okay? And you've got a culture that will tell you over and over and over again that joy is being in charge. Joy is being top dog. Joy is getting six figures. Joy is having all the good stuff, all right? And, and by the way, joy is also sitting around and doing nothing and being pleasure and then just fed and like, it, it, it's terrible, okay? It sounds good on the surface, but there's not a whole lot of fulfillment at the end of the day with it. So if you wanna have joy and gratitude stolen, you can believe you're gonna receive things that God never actually promised you. That's what happens. You feel entitled to things instead of grateful for them. If you're more rooted in the wisdom of the world than God, you won't be grateful. And here's the thing. Ingratitude is the result of unbelief. Okay? Ingratitude is the result of unbelief. Maybe we don't have joy. Maybe we're not thankful today because we're listening to the wrong voices that actually end up clouding the path of truth. And we need the light 
of Jesus to shine into those dark places and show us where the joy and the gratitude can be found. Gratitude is the result of well-placed faith. Gratitude, faith, faith leads to gratitude. And that brings us to the second point. The more faith we have in Jesus, the more gratitude we'll have today. Do you believe it? That's what the Bible teaches. If we're rooted in the words of Christ, we will be more grateful for every moment of every day, even the hard days, even the hard days. And so it will extend beyond a holiday or a season. Christians shouldn't need a holiday to be thankful. It's good that we have the holiday, but we shouldn't need to wait for the holiday to feel thankful. It's like, you know, well, it's Thanksgiving, so I guess I'll, I guess I'll be thankful for something. You know, kind of get the Eeyore going. Thanks for noticing me. You know, saw me. You know. So we need to be rooted in, in, in the word, in the promises, and what he said, and established on the cornerstone. Jesus is firm, guys. Jesus can hold himself up. Amen? When I'm weak, he is strong. It's not the other way around. Jesus is strong strong man I mean he can hold himself up the whole universe says the Bible says the whole universe is held up by the word of his power whoa Jesus is firm Jesus is complete on his own we are not complete on our own we are not complete we are in parts pieces and scripture says we're to be built up on the cornerstone of Christ and we function best when we're placed together alongside other brothers and sisters that make up the body of Christ. Being established on the rock of Jesus will lead to based gratitude. Based. Because you're looking forward to the right things. Okay? Foundational joy. I want that. Do you want it? Foundational joy for each day. And so I was thinking about this this past week. You ever play that game, uh, Jenga? You ever played the game Jenga? You know, with the planks, and you build the tower up? So basically, yeah, you got a tower of planks, you stack them on top of each other, everybody uh, takes a turn pulling out a plank, right? And uh, you don't want to be the sucker that pulls out the plank that makes the whole tower fall down, because then you lose. But the whole idea to win the game is that you're taking turns weakening the s- structure until it eventually falls, right? Some of us have been playing spiritual Jenga for way too long. Okay? Some of us have been playing spiritual Jenga. The way you do that is by seeking the things or looking for things that are not promised by God, living as if they were promised by God. And then whenever you don't get that thing and you don't feel grateful for the things that you actually have, you're just ungrateful. You end up being miserable because you're believing a promise that was never promised to you when there are so many things that have an eternal weight of glory available to us today that if we would get in our Bibles, if we would stop listening to all the voices in media or the world or whatever it comes from and we would actually get in the word and listen to what God says, we would find gratitude. Because gratitude and joy are like brother and sister, church. They really are. Here's the thing. We shouldn't be pushing the limit to see how far we can get. We should actually be playing, the Christian life should be like reverse Jenga, okay? Be, that wouldn't be very fun to play, but we're actually adding more and more planks to the structure, making it stronger, making it stronger. The only way to have that state of mind, though, is to seek the mind of God, okay? We're in a wrong state of mind. This is Charles Spurgeon. I haven't quoted him in a while. We're in a wrong state of mind if we are not in a thankful state of mind. And he also said, may gratitude to God permeate my entire life. Here we are in 2023, living in comparison to people that have come before us, like kings and queens. And it just seems like there's more and more books piling up in the self-help section 
and people striving and losing their joy and their gratitude. But how can it be had? The answer is simple to say. It's easy to read it, but it's hard to, hard to apply. And that's because, if we're being honest, it's not always easy to believe. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. The truth is, the more faith we have in Jesus, the more gratitude we'll have today. Whatever circumstance you're in, whatever, whatever valley, whatever mountain, don't thank God for the mountains and hate the valleys. Don't do that. Because then you're missing out on joy that could be had today. Jesus it was the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Amen? He's the ruler of the kings of the earth. And what did he come to do? He came not to be served, but to serve. And so if we want to have gratitude in all functions of life, then maybe we should be looking at the attitude of Jesus, okay? The attitude of Jesus. And remember, it's just that reminder, he knows more than we do. He was there before the world began. What kind of attitude do we need to seek? Philippians 2, 5 through 11. I think we would agree that Jesus is the most excellent person that's ever lived. Amen? Colossians might be about the supremacy of Christ, but all of creation and the whole entire Bible is about the supremacy of Jesus as well. This is the mind and the attitude of Jesus Christ. And this passage blows my mind every time I read it. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed him on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Isn't that beautiful? Just don't skip over that first part, guys. Because if with passages like this, for me, it's amazing how full the self-help sections are in bookstores. But it's not hard to believe if one doesn't believe in Jesus or doesn't believe the things that Jesus has said. And I'm not saying all self-help books are bad, okay? No, don't pin me with that. This is the mind of God, though. This is the love of God, and the only proper response to this kind of attitude and person is for our attitudes to change to one of gratitude. That's the only proper response. Worship, gratitude, every praise, 10,000 reasons, every single thing we could ever conceive of that's good in this life is good because God shared it with us. You've got to interrupt that perspective. You can't have the J.G. Wentworth perspective, okay? It's my money and I need it now got to have, I have every reason to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. True fulfillment. Are you getting hungry? It's okay. I'm almost done. Anyway, take a little more time. Take a little more time. Okay. Have you, brother or sister, Receive Jesus. Because the entire premise of, of what I've shared this morning and what the Bible says is only true if you have that faith. Okay? Because that's the foundation. That's the root. Life won't be easier with Jesus, but it will be better. I can guarantee that. It will be more fulfilling. It doesn't mean that the difficult days will stop 
or that we won't have a bad season. It doesn't mean that you won't suffer. There will always be perceivable reasons. You get that? Perceivable reasons to be ungrateful, not actual ones. Because the Bible says that we can give thanks in all circumstances. Jesus shows us on a sacrifice on the cross for every person that will call upon his name that there's a more excellent way to approach life. And it might not feel possible and may be incredibly difficult to believe at times, but if God says joy and gratitude are capable of being had in all circumstances, then I, we ought to listen to God instead of what the self-help gurus are saying. Okay? He knows better than we do. We don't have to understand everything to give thanks in all circumstances. Worship team, come on back up. These people are hungry. I might be a little hungry too. Are you grateful? Come on, are you grateful? Gratitude is available in every moment of service, not just the times when we come together at church or when we're about to dive into a delicious turkey, even the hard days, at work, at rest, at home, in school, in the fun times, in the sad times. Every circumstance has a reason to be thankful to the Lord. You'll always find, if you, if you gotta tip the scale, of, well, I'm not happy about this today, and then compare it to the things that we should be thankful for, the scale is always gonna tip like this. So much more to be thankful for. So we need to believe Jesus, guys. And if, if, if that's all you hear me say today, I'm totally fine with that, okay? If you're not grateful, then you might not be believing Jesus. But if you believe in Jesus and your faith begins to grow, you'll realize that as your faith grows, your gratitude grows with it. Amen? Let's pray. Well, God, thank you for your word. Thank you for worship and praise and Thank you that we get to call you Lord, that we get this privilege of singing to you, hearing about you, and loving you, and thank you for loving us. So Lord, we just ask that you um, guide us and lead us when we leave the building later, but Lord, I just pray that you will help us to have fellowship in the other room, and I'm sure we might pray for it in there, Lord, but I'm going to go ahead and pray for it now too, we'll decide. Thank you for that food in there, Lord, it smells wonderful. Thank you for hunting seasons and turkeys and deers and all that stuff. Thank you for bad grammar. Lord, we love you and we thank you and help us to sing to give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand.
God is good all the time. time. We have every reason to be thankful. Every reason. Hey, seriously, you don't have to come tonight if you want to stay and eat the food. All right, we're not going to hold that. But you, but you do get, but you do get to, but you do get to come. So I mean, there you go. But anyway, please, 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 if you didn't sign up, it doesn't matter. We got tons of food. Please come eat it. Please come eat it. I don't care where you came from today. All right. I'm not going to hold up the door, but I am going to pray for you, benediction, and then we're going to go in the other room. All right, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go eat turkey.